Yo, what's good fam? It's your man Jay. I'm coming at you with a new episode of Evolutionary Comics. And today, what I'm doing is, I'm switching it up a little bit. I'm, I'm doing a, I'm covering something different than what I normally do from my what's in my bag to uh, my slab pickups or to my mail call pickups. I'm doing something different and I hope this is the beginning of my little, my pivot into getting more people into the channel and checking it out and to piquing your interest. So today's topic is dope covers. Today I am showcasing some of the dope covers that are on my most wanted list. Some of them I already have, most I don't, but I just want to share with you guys some of these dope covers that I've come across in the field and hopefully if you've come across them you've been smart enough to grab them because I let a few slip through my hands. So making a pivot with my channel Shout out to Ryan Clark, Channing Crowder, and Fred Taylor. I love you guys' uh, YouTube channel, your podcast, your show. Um, you guys are hella dope. And uh, hopefully one day I'll be able to get on that show and talk about comics. But um, that's another topic for another day. So anyway, let's get into these covers, these dope covers. Let's get it. list this is actually uh, I guess I'm doing it in a ranking system um, I don't really feel like it's ranked but this is number 10 on the list just to say there's a list but uh, the first book we're gonna talk about is the amazing spider-man number one this is the J Scott Campbell variant and this is variant D um, with this particular issue there was a bunch of different variants that came out with it um, I forget the total count but what's significant is for this one, this is kind of like a shout out to like all the different Spider-Men and Spider-Women. Um, and there's like a Gwenpool one, there's um, a Spider-Pig one, there's a Spider-Punk one, there's a regular Peter Parker one. So they all have their own little uh, exclusive covers and they're all catered to, you know, something within, uh, within their costume. This one is absolutely beautiful as you see. Um, it was very hard to get this one, so I don't have it. I've been, uh, I was on J. Scott Campbell's website. I found out about it kind of late, so the day that I went on, everything I was clicking on, it was sold out, sold out, sold out. So he, uh, he sold a complete set, then he did um, um, two at a time, and uh, I guess, you know, then after it came out, then you could get one. I missed out completely, was unable to secure any of them, um, didn't see one in person till weeks later, but this is it, this is a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. Um, as you see, the the reds in the cover with the uh, with the black background, the villains and the different characters within the Spider-Man you know universe. This is Miles Morales on the cover, one of my favorite characters. So this is hella dope. This is a, absolutely an excellent book to exemplify 60 years. You know what I'm saying? The 60th anniversary. So I love this one. Um, this one, like I say, is no particular order because uh, you're going to see another one of these books come up on a future Dope Covers episode. So absolutely. If you can get your hands on this one, definitely do that. Definitely grab this one. It won't be for $5.99 anymore, though. All right, so moving along. on the, Number nine on my list is Codename Knockout. This is a Vertigo Comics book. Um, I don't know anything about the actual book, the interior, the storyline, or anything. Because this is it's all about covers. And this is a J.G. Jones cover. And it's dope. The reason, the reason why I particularly like it, I love, I love seeing Sisters with the Afro. Um, this one kind of is a shout out to back the 70s, the 80s, I guess, with the, uh, with the bangles and the hoop earrings, the Afro. It's, this is dope. I don't, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it gets me just the, the look on her face and everything. That is so artistic to me. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, my number nine book on my list, and I don't have this one as well. But I just recently came across this one. Um, it's just something that jumped into my attention recently. So um, I'm definitely going to be looking for this one. I don't think it'll be as difficult to find, and if it is, um, I don't think it's going to be difficult at all. 
what I think is, I think it's actually going to be one of the more uh, cheaper books, that more economically uh, achievable books um, on this particular list because there's some heavyweights on this list. That J. Scott Campbell book, I haven't looked it up on eBay, but the last time I did see it on there, um, I think, you know, people were asking like $50 for the book. Something something crazy like that, but, you know, a hey, the artwork makes it in high demand, so... Alright, coming in at number 8 is Marvel Comics A-Force number 8. And uh, this is the Raza variant, this is the Black Panther variant, and uh, yo, so this cover is one of the only covers that I actually do have in my collection already. And uh, I, I luckily came across this one. I, I don't even remember where I picked it up from, but um, I was happy to see it. I almost, you know blew my stack, you know, when I saw it, I was like, yo, this is a cover, I, it's in, it's in my grasp, so yeah, this, uh, this cover is absolutely dope, as you see, it has Shiri on the cover, she's coming up out of the, out of the, out of guess, out of the dust of death, and, uh, you see that hand reaching down to pull her up into the light, that is T'Challa, none other than the Black Panther, pulling his sister, if you look and you notice, that she has her Black Panther garb on as well. So that's hella dope. It's very significant to today's time, especially with the Wakanda Forever movie coming up. Um, this is definitely something that's going to be um, with my next group of books that I send off to CGC to get slabbed because I do want to, you know, it. like I say, it's not so much about the grade um, with getting books slabbed or encapsulated, but it is about preserving the actual condition of the book for you know, for, for decades to come, I guess. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to be submitting this one. This is a beautiful book. All right, so sticking with Raza, um, as an artist, he's absolutely dope. He has a lot of hot books out. Um, I'm happy to say that I have a lot of them. And, um, but this one, you can get this one too. This one is already automatically obtainable. The reason why? Because it hasn't come out yet. So it doesn't come out till this Wednesday, um, which is going to be August 16th. It's going to be coming out this upcoming new comic book day. This is Black Adam number three, and this is a beautiful cover. That the red in this cover. I, don't, I always struggle with trying to remember what is my favorite color because I absolutely love colors so much that I see different comparisons and I'm like yo red is my favorite color today no black is my favorite color no brown is my favorite it's, it's crazy but this is popping this is popping I hope they have a foil cover for this one because if they do it's, it's gonna be hella dope and I guess this is kind of like from the movie when you when you see that um I guess when um the rock black black Adam hits earth He's out in the desert, you know, somewhere like that. So that's kind of what this one looks like. But uh, that light and it popping off, that's that's hella dope. So yeah, so this is the Raza cover. It's being written by Christopher Priest. Um, probably after this video, I am going to try to, you know, read issue one and two. Heard good things about it. Don't know a whole lot about how this particular one goes. I never was a Black Adam fan, honestly, until the movie started. They started showing previews for the movie. Um, with the rock, so I'm, I'm a big rock fan, so might as well pick it up and check it out. So let's get it. All right, so number six on my list today is Deadpool number 45, and this is the Sanford Green uh, variant cover. Um, it's titled What's the Duck? So as you see, it looks like those are the Tuskegee Airmen in the background, and uh, they looking down. I don't know. If that's Howard the Duck or who that's supposed to be. But he's looking at, at, they're looking at each other like, what the duck? So this is a hella dope cover. Sanford Green is one of the great artists um, of our day today. I loved his work on Bitter Root. And that's when I first was introduced to him. But I used to see his artwork on, uh, on Power Man Iron Fist comics. And I've always had like, a, he has that signature style to his art. And I never knew who that was. And... Then when Bitter Root came out, I was introduced to, you know, to the whole gang, you know, the creators of Bitter Root. And Sanford Green is absolutely dope. I love that. I love this cover. The browns and the yellows, the contrast in it, it's hella dope. So, yeah, it's 
pretty much he only had to use uh, three pens, a black pen, a yellow pen, and a brown pen. And, you know, I know he, the shade is all about the shading. So, yeah. But anyway, stay tuned for more on this Deadpool number 45 because before this uh, list is done, you guys are going to see another Deadpool 45 on this list. All right, so all right, so coming in at number five, um, another artist who I am just like like is a fan favorite. Um, I don't know um, if he's still doing work now, but Frank Frazetta is absolutely one of my top ten favorite artists. This is Freedom Number One, aptly titled Frank Frazetta's uh, Freedom Number One, and it's funny. This book came across my attention. This book came out in March of 2009. Um, this came out recently this year or it was brought to my attention recently this year um, when I was in training class and everything. We used to like get different covers and put them together and see who found the dopest covers of the week. This was my one of my nominations that I found somehow and uh, my instructor gave me a little bit more education on Frank Frazetta, showed me some more of his work and I instantly became a fan. This, honestly, yo, this this right here needs to be um, the theme of a photo shoot. So, if I can find one of them long rifles, you know, a Colt 45 like that, I I can I can find the girls for it. So we're not gonna worry about that. But this is an Image Comics book, so you guys definitely check this out. It is it's absolutely dope. Frank Frazetta, yeah. All right, so coming in to number four, but before I reveal what number four is, if you guys are liking the content on this channel, please subscribe to the channel. Most importantly, watch the channel. Give me, let me get those views up. Leave me some comments to let me know what I can do to improve the channel, what can be done that's going to be better. Or if you just want to chat with me, communicate with me, you can either hit me in the comments or you can hit me on my Instagram, which is Evolutionary Comics. And, um, yeah, that's, you know, that's pretty much it. All I'm going to talk to you about is comics because that's the life, that's my culture, that's what I'm loving. So, all of that to say, bringing in my favorite creator, the favorite writer. Alright, so coming in at number four, this is uh, one of my favorite creators, um, one, of, one of my favorite writers matching up with one of my favorite artists. And I guess everybody, one of everybody's favorite artists. This is Francisco Matina. This is Philadelphia number one. This is the Virgin variant. This is an absolutely difficult book to find. The thing that hurts so much about this book, as you see, it's uh, it's the epitome of horror. It looks really, really great. And the thing that I hated was I do believe that I saw this book on the shelf the day that this came out, and I grabbed another cover instead. Um, trying to conserve, not spend a whole bunch of money. I don't know if it was like a heavy pickup day or what the case may have been, but I think I passed on this one. I don't know if I actually did or if it's just my mind playing tricks on me, but it sucks because this is definitely something that I wanted and I could have got it for four bucks. The last time I saw it running on eBay for 500 bucks and I'm like, dang, it's out of reach and it's very difficult to acquire this book in a 9.8 now. Um, a lot of times with darker books, with black books, the uh, the spine ticks, the, the creases, they show up a little bit more because once the cover bends a little bit and it cracks that cup, that color, then you'll see like the white coming through. So, you know, if you got this book and it's in pristine condition, send it to me. No, I'm just joking. Just take care of it and uh, try to get it sent in the CGC and get it preserved because this is absolutely dope. This is the epitome of the beginning of the story where uh, James Sangster, he comes back to Philadelphia, um, he meets up with his dad and he finds out that vampires are real. So uh, yeah, I love this I love this whole series and out of the entire series, this is probably my most favorite cover. It's absolutely dope. Alright, coming in at number three on my list, and this is The Amazing Spider-Man number 800. So, this book actually came out in May of 2018. 
and I'm trying to think what was I doing back then because I don't know how I missed this one. Um, I do think that it was because I wasn't really paying attention to variants too much back then. Really, really new and fresh to, uh, to collecting again. I've only been collecting again for about eight years. And um, this one is the Del Auto 1 in 200 Virgin variant. And um, yeah, this is a difficult book to acquire now. The price has gone up, like they say, the price of the brick then rose. So it's difficult to grab this one. It is a beautiful cover. I love the, the tenacity and the arc in Spider-Man, even with a mask on. You can tell that he's probably gritting his teeth and, you know, his muscles are flexed because something is about to happen. You see how the, the webs on his body is flying away. I don't know. It, it's just a hella dope cover. And I love the way Del Otto, he actually draws um, Spider-Man's eyes because you see how they're real sleek looking. You know, to me, that's, that's I don't know, that's like a signature thing because whenever I see that, I automatically know that, oh, that's a Del Otto book, you know, or... Even in the interior artwork, I think he did. Um, I did some Grim Hunt books, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't have all of those, so I can't remember exactly, but I do believe so. But yeah, this is a hella dope book. If you come across it, grab one for me. It is a little hefty. Um, the price is hefty. When it first came out, it was a 9.99 cover uh, cover price. It's 80 pages, and right now, um, just a lot more than that. So. Yeah, I love this particular book. This is hella dope. Alright, so I told you guys to remember Deadpool number 45. And that name appears on our list again today for dope covers. And this particular cover, this like kind of coincides with my life. Because this one, I'm, I'm very deep in the comics. But I also, I'm a hip-hop baby. I was born at the beginning of the hip-hop era. And um, so I'm, I love hip. I love when hip hop and comics cross each other when they kind of combine. And this is absolutely dope because my one of my favorite rappers of all time, one of my favorite artists of all time, Killer Mike. This is his group, Run the Jewels. This is the Run the Jewels variant, and it's done by probably my top three favorite comic book cover artists, Scotty Young. And um, so Scotty Young. With, on the cover of a Deadpool uh, Run the Jewels cup, I, I'm getting tongue tied even just thinking about how much I, I feel this book is dope. I saw it one day, and um, I don't know where I saw it, but um, I came, it came across my desk shortly after I discovered the book. And I, I saw there was a Mexican variant, and then this particular one. I absolutely went batshit crazy because I was like, "Yo, I gotta have this book." The last time I looked, it's running for about $350 to $500 on eBay. Um, whenever I do either come across the book at a cheaper rate or somehow acquire the book, I am going to try to slide up to Atlanta and um, use some of my friends. Yeah, I guess you could say it like that. Use some of my connection with friends to see if I can run into Killer Mike and get him to sign it. Either Definitely get Killer Mike. If I get it signed, Killer Mike has to sign it. Jeremy, if he's around, I definitely want to get him to sign it as well. Um, this book came out in April of 2015. And, uh, yo, I'm definitely loving Run the Jewels music. Killer Mike, this cover, Deadpool. This is definitely a classic cover. That's why it's number two on my list. All right, all right, all right. So now we're down to the number one book on my first segment of Dope Covers. And um, this particular cover was another book that I agonized and I grieve over because this particular book, it was in my grasp. I looked at it. I walked down the aisle. You know, I said I was going to come back and get it, and I forgot to pick it up. I, I saw it on the shelf at Emerald City Comics in Clearwater, Florida, my local comic book shop. I kid you not. I looked at the cover, and I was like, well, I don't really collect that, but, you know, that's a dope cover. Then I walked away, and I was like, well, I'm going to go ahead and get that cover. But something caught my attention, and I did not. This book, it should always grasp your attention. It will grasp your attention if you see it. And this is Age of X-Men, Apocalypse and the Extract. Apocalypse and the Extracts, number one. This is the David Nakayama cover. And as you see, 
that's artistry right there, yo. That is pure art. I'm loving this particular cover. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it that I missed out on it. In fact, David Nakayama is actually coming to CGC sometime soon. I saw it on their announcement thing. He's coming there to uh, do a private signing, and I could have been getting this book signed. This book, I don't know the significance as far as the story. Like I said, I, I read X-Men, but I was I just didn't want to pick up this one because I think I, it was another case where my pull list was kind of thick, and I was trying to, you know, not be cheap, but not try to spend, you know, all the money in my wallet. My wife would kill me. But, um, yeah, so I saw this cover, and I didn't pick it up, but... I regret it. I regret it because I have not seen it anywhere for cheaper than $500. And uh, I'm like, yo, what happened in the book? Is it just the cover? I don't know if it was a low print run or whatever the case may be. But yeah, that's art. As you know, I'm a photographer and that's why I always I'll throw out that, you know, this should be a photo shoot. Um, yeah, this should be a photo shoot. I, I can't get over that fact, but anyway i'm gonna have to get over it until i get this book and hopefully if i can acquire it soon and get mr david nakayama to sign it get it put in the slab and preserve it that'll make it all the greater anyway so that is my top 10 list of dope covers i'm hoping you guys seen something today that you don't have i hope you've seen something that's gonna make you run out and uh, look for it my comic book shop, mycomicshop.com or eBay or wherever you guys, you know, shop for your comics. Definitely, definitely, if you come across this in a while, I guarantee that you're probably going to get a good deal on it from uh, what people know it is because it is such a rarity. I have not seen it since that day that it came out. But anyway, my top 10. Hope you guys loved it. Hope you guys see some dope stuff today. And uh, if, you, if you guys have some dope comics, that, some dope covers that you want to bring my attention to, hit me up in the comments. Send me a message on Instagram. My Instagram, again, is Evolutionary Comics. Talk to you, boy. Other than that, all I can tell you, baby, is to continue to evolve. It's your man, Jay, Evolutionary Comics. And we have peace.